Welcome to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Episode 8 of Hot Copics, what a pleasure it is to be back, not only with you, my brother James Redman, but to be back here at Jürgen's oh, for that's episode amazing. And I, I want to big up Jürgen so, so much, honestly, the way they've treated us today and last week was unbelievable. The really? audio messed up last week, but we're praying that we've got the job done. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, we're trying, yeah. people, so if it doesn't we're work trying. this week, it'll work next week. Either way, we want to shout out Jürgen's. We want to let you know that if you visit Jürgen's, then you can get 20% off. Of so it nice is 20%. Or and, a nice and how little do you drink. get that 20%? You get that 20% by simply saying, hot copics. But you don't have to say it in the American accent. You yeah. can just say hot copics if you speak like me. Or do you Alex, know what? You we won't discriminate. Any accent. Any you can accent. Say it in any accent. As long as you say hot copics, yeah. you get yourself a nice and little 20% off uh, the bevy. And Alex they've has been, got his bevy. I've got yes. mine. And they've been saying don't that people have actually been coming in and saying that. Which so is it's what, working. Thank you so much it's as well, working. people. Honestly, so, big up yourselves. Cheers to that. I just cheers. tried to cheers you. But You're you not drinking it. at the minute. We'll, tell, we'll talk about that after. My but I'm, I'm we'll we'll touch bit. on that at the end for sure. But um, I was going to say something. I was membership gonna... cards, though. If you get down here and get yourself a membership card, Gosh. that gives you life, uh, well, lifelong supply of 20% Definitely. off. And the new food menu. Let's talk about this. You've got... Um, got the scan now. Pub classics. You've got light bites. Jürgen's Burgers. Great shout that. Kids' meals, you've got pizzas, you've got sandwiches, everything you could need. So big up to Jurgens on the food. Like, for example, tonight with the Porto game, so I don't know if you're watching this after or before the Porto game, but they're going to be doing a scrunch on the game, so make sure that you're um, definitely come here for that. But nah, big up Jurgens. Also, smash your like on the video if you haven't already. Share it around, leave a comment, and for the first few hours, I will reply to all your comments. So if you want to call me a dickhead, call me a dickhead. If you want to say that I'm right about things, say that I'm right about things. And yeah, if you want to say yeah. Mohamed Salah is the best Premier League player that is right now, then absolutely say it and I will agree. But, um, yeah. Well, like you said, bro, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be back. I've been Skate. away myself. It's a bit of a stressful week, if I'm honest with you. You know, things saying? have happened, but we're here. Uh, and what I'm here. And I'm back. It's good to see you. What a football. great job you and Ruby did as well, by I the way, for the fan it, cams after the Palace game. Some great numbers on that. So if you haven't watched them, go back. Obviously, been out of the loop, but we're back now. Back to business. Well, actually, um, I wanted to ask you, because you have been gone for a while. The, the Cop, TV, Cop TV have been seeing a lot of my face. So have, I wanted yeah. to ask your question. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question in terms of what have you thought of the past few weeks? I think it was from the Milan game yeah. that you've been a little bit... You've still done content, don't get me wrong, but you've, well, had, you've been busy game, and whatnot. Really. Palace game, you, so you, what, you have, what has been cams. your overall thoughts when That's you digest question, everything? Mate. Because I've had a lot to say. So, it, and a lot it, listen, happens. if you don't know, I was, I was abroad and I fractured my rib on the first day of being there. Mentally, physically, I just wasn't in the right place to do content. But, like I said, we're back now and I've been watching the games from where I've been watching them. Um, really impressed. And I saw you do a tweet, actually, that, that I really agree with. It's almost like we're watching the 18-19 version of Liverpool. We still are because of that draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is quite apparent Very 18-19 Liverpool. I mean, we drew about six or seven games that season. But in, in, in all honesty, it's been a pleasure to, to kind of see us go on and beat... Um, who did we beat after Palace in the league? We beat, I think we drew to Brentford to Palace. But we beat Norwich in the league cup. There we go. To see that game, team. Minamino doing really well. Origi, which begged the question that you the said. Japanese the Japanese Messi. Well, I don't know about that so far. Japanese but Messi, listen, lad. Minamino back in the picture, 100%. Ah, and Samurai. then the Brentford game, I was watching that gutted when they equalised. Oh, it was devastating. I, uh, do you know what? I think we should touch on the Brentford game. I actually, I, mean, I think we should just, Jürgen, I think we so should just genuinely tell them, oh, as if we were watching what this game. What do you game. think of the kit, first and foremost? Now you've it, seen it in person. Matt Arnold's business, lads. Yeah. I'm not into it at all. It's not something that I'll be wearing anytime soon. But listen, if we won in it, I might have a little bit of a better thing. But this game, in my opinion, defensively, it just weren't good enough. I thought, going forward with vintage Liverpool, still getting goals. But at the same time, as much as you can blame Virgil van Dijk and Joel Matter, who both had a below par performance, I think you've got to blame Mo Salah as well. Yeah. And I love Mo Salah, and Mo Salah still created. So imagine it being his fault, and he still created in the game. He still scored. He still done his job, but it was the most crucial part and the easiest finish of the game, in my opinion. Even harder than the one where the player came on and cleared Salah's shot, he puts it over the bar. That if you go four two up the game in the in the seventy fifth minute or over. whatever it was the game's over it's finished you get the three point even if they get one back you think Virgil Van Dijk and Joe Matip have the the know how to be able to shut that game out 
Jürgen can maybe bring on another centre back. That's another thing, actually, and I want to know your thoughts. No, we had Kanate on the bench, Gomez, and Jürgen brings on none of them. He, br- he takes off Curtis, brings on Bobby, and does no defensive changes. Yeah, difficult to understand that decision, to be honest. I mean, Curtis, you could see, as soon as he scores to make it 3-2, he's coming off. He was the one creating things. He was things. the one, trust he was the one me. I, I actually shots think he was the man the of the match in that game as well. Um, which him or deserved. Henderson. Like, yeah, him or Hendo. Hendo Henderson, great amazing. assist, which meant now he's got 50 assists for Liverpool. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. That went um, under the radar. Racking up, numbers, right. Hendo, you racking know, we up love Hendo that. numbers there. We love to see it. Um, but yeah, Curtis Jones, really unlucky to come off. I think his third goal as well was very Gerrard-esque, if we're being honest. Oh, of course it was. Um, but that's... I'm not saying he's as good as Steven Gerrard or whatever, but Gerrard still took a while to, you know, bed into the team and whatnot and become what he's become. Yeah. Curtis has now had uh, two seasons, three seasons there and thereabouts with the first team doing his thing. And now that he's getting a little bit more first team game time and then you see Harvey getting above him, Thiago getting above him, he knows he needs to step up and bring something to this team that... Quite frankly, we just don't have at the moment. We just don't have someone who's direct, tenacious, someone who's just going to go in the box or actually outside the box and just give it a go. He hit the post on one of them. He hit the post on one of them and then he scored it. Sometimes, if you go for it, you can get results. And when we were coming up against Brentford at times in the second half, they just look compact. In moments, because they had the back five and they were getting the midfield back as well. So we needed someone who could do that. That's yeah. why I liked him last season, yeah. Jordan the dance, but I thought he was great. No, I, listen, he I'm a great, huge man. fan of Curtis Jones. I really wish that you know he gets a lot more chances, and he will now, because like you said as well, the injuries are coming thick and fast. Yep. I mean, we're talking just before the Porto game. That's why we've got this bad boy behind us, the Champions mm, League. This is what we need to bring back, back this season. But the injuries are racking up, bro. We've seen Cater injured, but now back in training. Trent's yep. not travelled with the squad tonight for yep. uh, the Porto game, and now he's a massive doubt for Sunday. Nah, of course. I mean, more injuries but are happening to Harvey, Thiago. Um, so, it, it, listen, it's not as bad as last season, but there's still a mini injury crisis starting to begin. And at the end of the day, this only opens the door for players like Curtis. And, and do you know what? This is something that I want to ask the comment section, more importantly. Naby Keita and Curtis Jones, mm. who starts above them? Very because Naby Keita's now coming back to training, and I think it's important for someone like that £50 million that like you somehow try and get him to work in your team. Jürgen Klopp obviously fancies him. Liverpool in general don't want him to flop. But then you've got Curtis Jones who needs valuable game time as well. Especially and they both age. bring very good elements to the game. Listen, Curtis just scored a great goal, but Naby Keita scored the best goal of the season. So at the end of the day, they both bring things to the midfield that we don't usually have. Like In my opinion, I think Naby is the slightly more polished player. Polished, not better or anything, just polished in terms of experience, being able to keep up with the game. It's his injuries that worry me. Yeah, Whereas down. Curtis, he's someone who's there, he's reliable. I'd rather try and get him into the team now than in years' time while he's actually got a chance. I'm going to say Curtis Jones goes in above Naby Keita if I've got the choice because it is out of them. Tenson, Fabinho and whoever you put next to them. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about that. That's a great reckon? question. Me personally, and, and you've made, a, again, I'm always agreeing with your points on this show because they're very good. I would totally agree and I would say if we're talking about which player is a more rounded, more experienced, more... What words can I use here? It's difficult. Then it's Cater. He's been in men's football for longer. That's what I mean. He's been in men's football for longer. Then it's Cater. But if you want someone, and let's not forget, one of the big things about Curtis Jones that we love is the fact that he's a scouser. If he was from Yorkshire, I'm not being funny, bro. There's no way... He would have warmed to the crowd. Fantastic it, maybe he wouldn't even scored in that derby. You know, if he was. And Fantastic. I think point. because he is a scouser, he took that shot on in the yeah. derby and put his name he on it. He knows what it's about. If he wasn't, would he have done that? Yeah. So I think yeah, he right now, he can do it with his left maybe and right Kater, foot. But if we're looking at potential, who's got a higher ceiling, who's a little bit more... I would say is Curtis more technical, but Naby's very technical. Both very technical players. Very, very good on their feet, both of them. They, they both like a little twist and a yeah, turn, a little step over. Well, I, I, Who's the bigger goal threat? I would say probably say about the same. Nah, do you want me to tell you something? Naby can score a worldie for sure, no doubt about it, but I watch Curtis. I've watched Curtis quite a bit. I've probably watched them both around the same similar time, probably Curtis slightly more. Slightly more. Yeah. And the way Jürgen Klopp spoke about him in training and whatnot, saying he can shoot off his left and his right, and he tries that often, I'd rather Curtis Jones. I think he's more... 
Well, regardless of whoever you think is more technical, that's not really the issue. It's about who does what you want from them more. Curtis Jones actually has a go. And it usually, nine times out of ten, gets close. And if you have a go, listen, Gerard had a game a lot like of that goes. against low block sides, that's what yeah. you need. That's what wins you them games. That's why Coutinho was amazing for us, because he was just always there, scoring world-class goals, blowing our minds. Southampton, a lot of times, when they close down and shut up at the back, Mate, he was there just scoring top Some ins off the yards. bar, yeah. bouncing, bouncing. Bouncy ball business. No, listen, he is the, out of all the... Look, we're watching it now. Curtis Jones, he cuts in and, and he, he scores, just has right? a, And you know what? It's, it's a, a deflection. No, it's a deflection and I understand that. And okay. even the one that went off the post was a deflection. But you don't get them close chances. You don't get them goals, which, by the way, would have been the winning Great. goal. I'd love to see it, though. Look at him. Oh, oh, it's brilliant and I made up for him. But... You don't get that without someone actually having a go. Yeah. That was I'd our. Love no, to see do that. you know last season when we were losing one nil, one one, this that, and we had that little spell of games because no one was going for it. We weren't yeah. playing really well. We didn't really have a cohesion in the sides because obviously everyone was getting injured and no one would just have a go. If Coutinho was in that team, if Curtis Jones was given a little bit more of a chance, you never know. You could see us win a few of them games. But you know, to see a shot. Like that, 25 yards out. He cuts inside, one touch. That was one of the himself. best performances Gosh, I've ever saw in. from Curtis. Yeah, for sure. But you know how refreshing it is to actually see someone, look, and, th and then you see his face as he's just come Devils. off as a sub. He's devoured. But you know when you actually see someone take a shot, and I'm not talking about Caters, which was just, <coughs> just on the edge of the box. Yeah. We were used and we've grown up seeing Gerard shoot from 30 yards and we're thinking, what are you doing? And then it goes top corner. And then even when Gerard went, we still had Coutinho. So exactly. there's always been that player in the midfield that can create a moment of magic. Even though this team is amazing, there's no one who's created magic. And it's magic. refreshing to see a goal like that. 100%. Even though there was a deflection, if you don't score, if you don't shoot, you're not going to score that goal, yeah. to be quite honest with you. But really good to see Curtis, to be fair. And... and Hopefully he can start tonight, but there is a massive game at the weekend. But also, before we get into that, but also Naby Keita, big up himself, because you know what, mate? When he stepped up in that Crystal Palace game, he took his fucking chance. You can say what you want about his yeah, injuries. You, you can't blame a man if they get injuries. You've got, to base them, you've got to judge them based on what they do on the pitch when they're actually given a chance. Naby Keita, this was like one of the first games Steven Gerrard has been back at Anfield. Yeah. His kid's first game. Naby Keita, oh, he doesn't deserve the eight shirt. And I understand that. I'm not even saying that's wrong. But then goes ahead and scores a fucking goal Stevie like that. that game, Stevie yeah. was at the game with his kid. And then that was his kid's Sick. first ever game. Really? And Naby Keita scores that goal. The number eight. That his little lad. Him. That was his little lad's first ever game. Imagine True. that. Amazing, mate. But in that game as well, Salah gets his 100th goal for Liverpool. He scored his 100th no, Premier scored, League goal. Premier League and then now this game in the Brentford. Us. So 100 goals, 151 games. The fifth quickest player of all time to do it after Henri Aguero. Yep. Sorry, not he beat Henri actually. It yeah, was Shearer, it, Aguero, and Harry Kane. And Harry Kane. Yep. That's incredible, bro. And, and he's I, a right winger. And do you know this notion, right? That he's a striker. And, 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 but he, 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 he just starts on the right. Haters will call him a striker. Look at the fucking heat map of the player of his average position. It covers the right hand side. And it's not just in the box. Of course, the majority is in the box. But he tracks back his creativity this season has been another level. And I'm not going to lie, I said a quote a few weeks ago, probably at the start of the season, saying Salah is our second best Liverpool player in, in the Premier it's hard League. I disagree either. with that now. I really do not think, like, anyone really like them numbers are undeniable inevitable is the word that comes to mind with Mohamed Salah at this moment and that's why I love him mate right now he's the best player in the Premier League debate it in the comments down below of course I'll happily message you back but it's just I don't know it's, even that game where he missed I still know he's just class he's just class mate but the, the point you made a few weeks ago I thought you were right at the time but as soon as he scores again, 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 and again, and again, and again, and he just keeps going. And it's consistent good performances are, now. It's like, for instance, I've got a, an Arsenal fan mate, right, who he thinks Ronaldo in the Premier League has now been surpassed by Salah. And he thinks, he's an Arsenal fan, he's got no right to say... He said Salah's surpassed Ronaldo. Ha, yeah, so Ronaldo's been passed, see you later, by Salah. By Salah, okay. In terms of Premier League. Now, okay. he said to me last night, Alex, is, Ren is Salah a winger or a striker? And I said he's a winger. The haters will say he's a striker because they'd like to compare him with other goal scorers. But if you look at his average position, this is what we need to look at, his heat maps, his average position. Every time that man receives a pass for Liverpool, it's on the left, it's on the right hand wing. He very rarely he, loses. He literally the ball. stands on the touchline. Yeah. So for him 
to keep up this level of four years of unbelievable talent, but also the goals as well. Yeah. For a winger. No, it's, uh, it's every C. It's the consistency. Alan Shearer wasn't a winger. Sergio uh, Aguero the, wasn't a winger. The but thing, a winger is putting big numbers on the board that are higher than Thierry Henry's mm. or better than Thierry Henry's, mm. who we know started out on the wing at Arsenal yeah. and then ended up as a number nine, which is potentially what Salah is going to do. But I think that right wing position, he's, the, he's easily the best winger in the world. For yeah. me. No, he is for me. He is for me as well. But people will say, oh, but Neymar looks nicer and Hazard nah, looks nicer. Bro, but at the end of the day, bollocks. like let's not even let's not even forget. Mane's had his injuries, Firmino's had his injuries. Salah is always there. Fit. He's, he's, all, he's reliable, he scores goals, he creates goals, he tracks back. Everything that ev- put people label Mohamed Salah, he's contradicted it massively this season. He's a diver, I've really seen him dive this season. He's, um, he's too selfish, he's created more than yeah, most players in our it. squad. Uh, he, 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 he's a one-season wonder, well, he's proved you wrong for four seasons on the bounce, mate, because he's still doing it. He's got 100 goals for fucking Liverpool football. Fuck in the sake. Premier League. 101 goals Probably in the Premier League. 130 for Liverpool. Like, lad, this is a player who would check, and the only reason... Why people won't put him on the level of certain players is because of the fact he joined late to the party, but it's about what you do in that period of the time. You can not fault, like, forget his time at Chelsea. His prime was at Liverpool in the Premier League. He's been one of the mainstays in this squad. He scores, he assists, he creates, like, everything that I've just said, that's what Mohamed Salah does, and he's helped us win trophies. He's helped us get to finals. We don't get top four last season without Mohamed Salah. Well, you saw um, 31 goals in all competitions nah. with Nat Phillips at the back. Come on, lad. And Nat Phillips Come on. a legend, by the way. A legend. But um, you saw uh, there was a, a chat between Salah and Lovren on WhatsApp where Lovren has said I to Salah... I didn't get that. Well, he said to Salah, it'll be interesting to get to see who gets golden boot. Will it be MS or CR7? Mm. But then he's blocked out Salah's reply. So, so you why can, is that you can see Salah, no, because Salah could have messaged back saying, oh yeah, me all day, mate, yeah. you're mad. But Salah might have said oh. to him, actually, bro, before you put that up, just cover out where I've said that mm. so it doesn't make me look like a dick. Yeah. Because we, Salah is very confident. Yeah. He, like, I love Salah. Everyone loves Salah. Probably not as much as they should do. However, he is a man booming with self-confidence. Booming with Ronaldo self-confidence. Ronaldo elevates Salah. This is, and when he I elevates said this, Salah. Though, I remember? said it as well. Like, I said, like Ronaldo it. coming will only do good things for Salah, but Gosh. it would have been really interesting. Let us know in the comments, actually, what you think Salah replied to Lovren's uh, WhatsApp. I mean, the fact that Lovren is still relevant in some way or another bemuses me. Still clinging on to his He's, old best mate. Yeah, he? of course he is. You know what I mean? They were good mates. You have a little weird thing with players who were shit at Liverpool, in it, Like ah, Lovren, yeah. Moreno. You need to swerve it, lad. Do you know what wow, I mean? They've, they've gone on. They've done their no, thing. Lovren, big up for the Dortmund goal. Of course. 100%. Moreno, as a, as a goal. personality... Manchester, get out. I'm not, Sweet, all, I'm not, like, I'm not taking any Moreno slander on this show. As a I'm not player, t- like, bro, next you, topic. Listen, next topic. Alberto Moreno, get out. No, this no, no. Podcast, get in. No, You're welcome to the podcast, Alberto uh, Moreno. Listen, if you want to jump on, let us know. You can do a Spanish segment together. Yeah, well, I'll just mug him off. Uh, no, he no, would no, mug you off, of course. Yeah, what well, do you mean? I'll just knock him out. Well, that's not right either, <laughs> I'm is joking, it? That's I'm not joking. right either. So, Alex, <laughs> next topic for fuck's sake. Right, let's talk about Sunday. Sunday. Um, if we beat Brentford, we would have gone three points clear over City. We, <sighs> drew. we missed an opportunity. Big there, missed you know, opportunity. Lads. But if, let's say, for instance, which isn't going to happen, let's say they beat us, all mm. of a sudden, we're two points behind them. We're still the only unbeaten team in the Premier League. I'd love to keep that up. But if Trent's out, if Thiago's out, how are we going to deal with this? But let's not forget, last season when we played them, all these guys were out. Where when we played Man City? And we lost 4-1 at home because Alisson uh, gave him two goals. I'll be dead honest with you, mate. I'm in two minds about this game. Because it can go either way. We're at Anfield and You're usually, sitting in the cop for this. Yeah, I'm you? sitting in the cop. So believe me, I am going to be doing my part to make sure Man City are intimidated during that fixture. Don't you worry, people. Watch I'll out be for the fan screaming. cam after as well, by the way. I will be screaming. If we win that game, my fan cam will be a madness. So make sure that you're on the... And if we lose, it will be a madness. Be a madness because, madness well. I, because I won't forgive the Brentford results. Yeah. I will not forgive that Brentford results if we go ahead and lose this game or draw this game. Especially if we lose at home, I expect to beat anyone any given day I don't care what time it is we should be able to beat Man City even with Thiago out Harvey Elliott out the injury crisis hasn't hit yet so we should be able to win this game therefore zero excuses but at the end of the day Man City 
in terms of passing the ball and whatnot, could be the best team in the league. This is where we're going to find out Chelsea. who plays the better football. They just beat Chelsea. Very hard team to beat. They dominated the game. And at the end of the day, when it comes to Manchester City, Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, it's a flip of a coin. It really depends who gets the tactics right on the day. Because they've both got great players. They've obviously got the squad depth over us and whatnot, of course. And that's another thing we've got to watch out for. They've got energy to bring on. So Van Dijk and Joel Matip can't afford to be lapsed in concentration like they was last week. We need Fabinho. Even though I didn't think he had an overall terrible game, we need to make sure he's more compact with the back five. And Alisson and Van Dijk specifically need to improve communication next game because I think that was a little bit yeah. of a problem as well against Brentford. Otherwise... I think we should be able to beat them. We've got the atmosphere. Even though we drew against Brentford, we've got the form. We've scored with the most dangerous team. We talk about Chelsea being the most offensive team. In terms of scoring goals, best believe we're back to being the most dangerous team. Jota is fit we into that front three. three goals in the last five games. There we go. Like three goals in, in each game. of them. Yeah. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? A proper attacking team. This is why I'm comparing us to 18 19 because we, we're exciting. If you're going to play, if you're going to go for the league title and you don't want to be a social defensive back five, be exciting and be attacking. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like This is why I, I don't listen, understand I why Spurs never got an attacking manager. I would much rather see us attack and go for it, and that's what we're doing this season, because I think Klopp knows our strength, and he knows that if we do get caught out, we've got two of the best centre-backs to deal with it. So I do think we, we can win this game, it's just a matter if we will. Yeah, big game Sunday, 4.30 at Anfield, under the lights. The one thing for me that is going to give us an advantage... They haven't won at Anfield, apart from last year, since mm. 2003. In all those games that I watched from 2003 to 2020, there wasn't one game where I thought, they're going to win this. When we're talking about Man City, and do you yeah. know why? Because of the fans, bro. Yeah. And I might sound like a broken record, but when there's a big game like that, and our fans get bang up for it, trust me, it gets in their head. And because we didn't have that last year, they ran riot. They took the piss. Yeah. They literally pulled our pants down and, and walked out the back door. It was unbelievable. Two huge mistakes from Allison in that game, which gifted them two goals. However, there was no fans in that game. And I'll be interested to see how Man City deal with that, with that raucous atmosphere. You look at players like Sterling, didn't score in any games against yeah. Liverpool since he moved, scores in the game that yeah. there's no fans in. I'd love to see if he, if he does that on Sunday. Because yeah. I genuinely just think, yes, Trent might not be there, but... I genuinely think we can Listen, win this. It if, will be tight, if, of course, if, if but Trent, I think we'll win. If Trent isn't there, James Milner will be there. Is that there. who you'd have at right back? A hundred percent. No, no, Nico Williams. <laughs> who is rumored to start tonight against no, Porto? No, do that, do that. Don't start him against Man City. If Milner is fit and he's firing, you get him in that game. Big game. He's a big game player. Former club. He knows what they're about. He knows what this game means. James Milner knows from eighteen, nineteen alone that yeah. if you lose this game, it could, could impact you. Win it. You could lose the league. Yes. I don't care how early it is. Remember 99 points to 97? Remember that? Because that was that broke my heart. I mean, luckily we won the Champions League. Nice, nice little number six to make, make up for it, I you know what I mean? To dry track. the tears. But it's still, imagine a double. Just imagine a double. And then we'd have two Premier Leagues. It's we should just, have three, though. But, we we, well, we, we should have, have another champion. Fight. We should have two Champions Leagues. and We should have definitely two Champions Leagues and two Prems. That's what we should definitely have. Yeah. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, motherfuckers. And these are the type of games where James Milner, he definitely steps up. But with Milner, the last time he played, which was against... Who did he come on? It was in the Premier Palace. League this season. He started. Palace. Started, started he against started. Palace at right back. And he was amazing. And he ran the show, bro. He was amazing. As in numbers-wise, stats-wise, he was the... He ran more than everyone else. who ran more than anyone else. And if you're still doing that at 36... What age do you stop doing that? Is it 40? If Milner is it 42? Is, do you know if Milner is still playing this level now? Because I think he's getting to the end of his contract. If he's still playing this level now at the end of the season, give him a, like do what other clubs do, Keep year, going, year extensions. Keep, year, at what age do you say... Because he's when defying he goes shit. science. Like when the, he goes shit. The, the physios are going... We can't get rid of him, Mil he's Milner. Too, he runs too much. <laughs> he's a robot, lad. Milner, right. Someone said to him to dish Mason Mount yesterday, Mil Mason Milner. And I was like, that is not a dish. You've just literally put him up there with one of the greatest players to ever grace the Premier League. I don't care. Like, Milner is unbelievable. And he, so many people will be like, oh my God, James Greatest. For so many other reasons to what you years, think. bro, without being good. And he's good at every club that he was at. Leeds, he was a wonder kid. Aston Villa, he was a part of a great team. He, him and Gareth Barry ran the show. 
pingham balls out wide to Ashley Youngford. Newcastle he's done a job. Um Man City, he won he was a part of your first trophies, Man City fans, so make sure you put respect. And then he came to us, wins us our first Premier League in 30 years, and also a Champions League, by the way. Don't forget the Club World Cup and the Super Cup, just a few little extra trophies to add into his resume. Because he weren't getting that at City. Milner is certified. Like, oh my goodness, I love James Milner, lads. lad. trophy cabinet is a joke. He need, if he's playing like this at the end of the season, give him a new contract. But Do he's 36 going 37 now. Sounds. I'm, I'm thinking for him... Plays like what, a 29 year old. What, but, but can he do this till what age? Till whenever he wants. Whenever, that, it's whatever mad. James it's Milner mental. says, Jane, it goes. When lad. he says, right, Doesn't I'm done matter. now, then you're done. Yeah, and we yeah. listen. We just sit there and listen. Do you want me to tell you He's... why, Alex? Do you want me to tell you why? Because it's James fucking Milner, and that's our legend, that's our captain. Do you know, do you know Henderson? Do you know how good Henderson is? Tribute that to Milner. Because yeah, what has Milner always been? A utility player. What is Henderson now? But he's a what is best Milner role? As well, Milner, like. Exact Mil- Oh, lad, just because he doesn't wear the R band, people don't realise it. I think it. Hendo would give a lot of Him credit to Milner. And Milner as well. are like the two. They're like Batman and Robin. Yeah, great stuff. And, and Milner, because he's so humble, just willingly be, bees Robin, but he actually has an impact, though. He's like yeah. the silent brain assassin. Do you know what I mean? He's great. It's, it's been brilliant to see, isn't it? And I think there's been new... And he was here before Jürgen Klopp. Exactly. He was there in the, in the Brendan days. But yep. you know how there's now a new committee, uh, a leadership group within yeah. Liverpool. So because Ginny left, there was a new vote. And the players that are... So obviously you've got Hendo, the captain... You've got Verge vice captain. Yes. You've got Milner third captain now, and then you've also been added. They've added Allison, Trent, and Robbo to the leadership team. Yeah. In that before was Ginny Wijnaldum, and they've all done a vote. And Klopp said, the new inductees of this group are Trent, Robbo, and Ali. Yeah. Would there be a shout to say Salah has to be in that group as well? Does he not? Absolutely. But you know what though? I think captain it depends. Of Egypt. I think it depends. This is the squad who has voted this. We can say what we want with our point of view. This is the squad who have voted these players. And if they feel that, Robbo, Alisson... Because you only know if you're in the dressing room, be all and end all. And also, some people may ask when he named that list, oh, but Gomez was captain against Norwich. That's only because none of them players played, just to clarify. Um, but no, I think with Salah, even though he does so much, and he is a leader in his own right, I don't get he leads by example just yeah. off his performances... But if, if people don't feel he, he deserves the armband, then that's a reason. And it's not because he's not a but good do you leader. Think that would have hurt We've his got ego so a bit. many leaders. No, no, I don't. Because at the end of the day, Mo Salah knows what he is. Yeah, and, and I think he likes to prove a point. Do you know what I mean? And that's, what, that's just what Mo Salah is. He's always been a proven people wrong type of player. Yeah. And he's always been able to do it, especially at Liverpool. And. Again, this is the players who have chosen this, not the fans yeah, or whatever. If it was a fan vote, we've would got Robbo many have got leaders. In? We've got many leaders. Salah would be captain of your yeah, mad. That's, but that's like, what I mean. But that's why the fans don't decide. Yeah. Because we maybe, don't know what we're talking about. maybe he doesn't fill them captaincy roles. Maybe what Mo Salah is is someone who's a great listener, mm. someone who can take on board what he, he has to do. Mo, make sure you track back. Mo, make sure you create. And Mo, make sure you score goals. And he does them things. So then you can't complain then. Trent, understandably so, because, of course, over time, you want to try and maybe get into the captaincy role. Um, otherwise, look at the names you're putting in there. The captain of Scotland, Alisson, a leader in his own right. We see it, an Brazil's example. number one. Exactly, so there you go. Um, who else was in that list? Trent. Trent. Who will be the future captain of Liverpool. Exactly, so then who's the other... Gomez who, could have been in who's it. Who's in the main list? Virgil, Milner, Milner and Hendo, Virgil. Yeah. Milner and Virgil. They're well more vocal. I mean, you don't Salah. need a list of seven, eight, nine players. Then it just there we go, and, well and, the they're, and they're all vocally very, very yeah. good. So make sure that you take that into consideration as well. But someone as well, like a Thiago, like a Fabinho. Let's not forget these blokes. Well, are filled with years leaders, old. lads. Everywhere there's leaders. Even Mane, I think he's the captain of Senegal, is he not? Yeah, well, he will be. Who else will it be? It's not going to so be a Trisha Garner gay, is it? We are lucky that. You know, and we still hold the record, the most ever Ballon d'Or nominees in one football team in one season. Seven for us last season when we won the league. Do you know what? I know we're going completely seven. off the road. And all of them seven lads, I think at the time, at least five of them were captains for their countries. We, well. need to win, we need to win the league this season. Let me tell you why. Because we need to make sure that this 11, and even Genie in hindsight, will make sure we get Genie in there, get talked about as some of the best in their position. Ever. Uh, ever, uh, like one of the best Premier League Facts. teams of all time. Because lads, I know they haven't won League Cups and FA Cups, but I'm not being funny or nothing. 
the level of performances they put 97 97 points and 99 points back to back i know we never won the league but points is everything like 97 and 99 points that's so we lost one game that We've season we got 97 in the last three years than city have and again, that does not win you trophies, Doesn't, but, but it's it still be. relevant to the argument when you mention about how many players was involved in the Ballon d'Or nominees, because it still means you Seven. had a good season. Captains of countries, like however many you said. Like this team, and look where it came from. This yeah. team weren't the team Nothing. what it was when we bought them. Robbo weren't the player that he was. Salah definitely weren't the player that he was. Nor was Mane, nor was Bobby. Verge, nor was Allison, nor was Henderson when Klopp came in. He weren't the player that he is now. Milner's probably the only one who you can say he's always sustained mm. like a proper professional level. Otherwise, everyone else has just improved. Yeah. It's a joke, mate. And the, to me, it will be talked about as one of the best Premier League Premier Leagues of all time. But name many teams that can do four or five years back to back. That good. I, I just can't tell you many. There's performance level and then there's the trophies that reflect that. And that's why yeah. many times you and I have said on this podcast, we need more trophies so this era doesn't kind of get forgotten about or go to waste, which it never will. Have one Premier League, one exactly. Premier League. That's, no. that's what you have to kind of listen out for. But let's talk briefly about the game tonight at Porto. Yep. Um, we've got Sean, who is out there. He's going to be sending in some videos and pictures. Mm -hmm. So big up to you, Sean. Um, but there's three things in life that are guaranteed. Death, taxes and Liverpool playing Porto in the Champions League. 100%. What kind of... And, and there's no Pepe as well, by the way, for Porto. Oh, He's Bosch. their best defender. Bosch. Saw that last night. What kind of game is this going to be like? Is it going to be similar to the, to the nine goals that we've scored in the last two games there? Is it going to be tighter? I think it's going to be a tight one, but I, I'm, I, maybe I'm just thinking that because obviously I don't watch Porto on a week-to-week -week basis, so I don't really know how they play at the moment, but I just imagine them wanting to sit back against us, especially without Pepe there, you're going to want a little yeah. bit more you know, compactness at the back, and I still think we'll win, I still think we'll be able to break them down, it just depends what lineup we go with, mm. that's the one that I'm thinking about, because we've just drew against Brentford in a very high intense game, we've got a big game against City on the weekend, we won our first game in the Champions League, you can afford to maybe rotate and not go for a draw, but if it is a draw then yeah, it's not too it's not bad, so I, obviously you start Alisson and you go with the back four of, the back four, that I, could be you, changed, you start Chimacas for me, you start yeah. Chimacas and then right back you'd obviously go with Nico. Yeah, because Milner isn't fully back yet. Trent either centre backs, Canate or Gomez. Like you could go or with Canate and Gomez, or you can go with. See, I want to give Matip a rest. If you're Bro, asking I me, I would go Canate and Nat Phillips. No, Gomez, Gomez, Gomez. Canate, I Gomez. Uh, yeah, Canate, Gomez. I wouldn't go with Nat. He's just he, he's yeah, definitely yeah, fifth choice. I love him, um, Matt. I love him. In the midfield, we've um, said Curtis. We've said Curtis Hendo. starts. Give Naby a rest. This one. If you're not going to start Curtis on the weekends, Curtis, oh, who's out of the midfield it's tough choices? Thiago's out. Elliot probably would have played. Oxlade, does he get a place in this but game? But is he a more attacking? I don't player, think he is. So we Otherwise could do. We would have for instance, more by we could now. play Curtis, Ox, and Hendo, and then we could do either a Minamino or Rigi as the number nine with Salah Mane. Uh, Salah and Mane both going to start. Bear in mind, Bobby Firmino's just came back fit. In that case, you could go Minamino. Rigi Salah. Firmino came on as a midfielder in the um, in the Brentford game. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, so, do you think maybe there's something there? He could maybe start in the midfield. I reckon there's going to be a lot of surprises in this team. We you've, are doing the live watch along for it as well. You've got guys, to go so with Minamino and Origi. I you've, think so. I think you've got think to go so, with yeah. them two along with either Oxlade on the wing or Mane. Maybe in fact I'd rather see Salah start than Mane. Salah loves starting every I game. I don't think Mane, fitness for him is not really a I don't like want to so see fit. Mane without Salah or Jota starting. Jota as I don't well, want to yeah. see Mane by himself just because he hasn't been that type of player recently. So um I'd rather go with me midfield, Curtis, Henderson, Ox. Yeah. I'd give agree Fabinho with that. rest. And then the front three. Minamino on the right, Origi in the middle. And then, would you go with Curtis on the left, and then Curtis, <laughs> and then Naby in the There's middle? A lot of decisions There's to a make lot of for this one. Um, but I do think we'll rotate. Yeah, all and end all there, there, there will be we'll definitely rotate. a few changes. Um, let us know if you're around tonight to come and jump on the watch along. Uh, get to Jurgens as well get to if, you, if, you're, if you want. Um, we'll it needs a place to watch a game. Do you know here. what I'm saying? Get to Jurgens. You have to be 18, obviously. Um, and then don't forget. 
Doyle and myself will be back on Thursday with our monthly review. And then at the weekend, we'll probably do a match preview on uh, Friday and then go for the big one on Sunday at Anfield. And of course, we'll be outside the cop um, for that one. But yeah, big up to, to James, big up to Jurgens for episode eight of Hot Copics. Like we said, jump down into Jurgens. It's Hot Copics, gets you 20% off. It's great for me to be back on the channel. It's been a week since I've been away. Really happy to be back. And let's have a good week. Remember, he's replying to the comments for the first two hours, so get them in, mate. Get yeah? them in there. Uh, right, we'll see you next time. Chief. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just before you go... Don't forget, give us a like, drop us a comment, and subscribe to the Cock TV. The voice of football's most famous stand.